Ladies and gentlemen, hello. I'm Pastor Rod Padell. I'm, I'm one of the pastors of Bloomington Living Hope Lutheran Church, and I'd like to welcome you to our online worship today. Uh, this morning, we're, or today, we're going to be continuing our sermon series. It's an Advent sermon series that has been entitled, Let Every Heart Prepare. And as we go through God's Word today, we'll be encouraged to prepare to give. So let's begin our worship today in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we rejoice every year at this time that we have the opportunity to receive the greatest Christmas gift of all. Because you so loved the world, you gave your only son for us. And the entire season of Advent is, is a season of preparation as we prepare to receive this Christmas gift once again and, and as we're reminded that Jesus will come again on Judgment Day and we need to prepare our hearts to meet him. Dear Heavenly Father, help our Christmas preparation this year. Help us to continue to be reminded how we are blessed because of a Savior and help us to share this Savior so that this blessing can come to others as well. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, the section of God's Word that we're going to use for today's consideration is recorded in Matthew chapter 13. Today, I'm going to begin with verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. My good friends, this is God's word. In Christ Jesus, our Christmas Savior, my very dear Christian friends. What was the most treasured Christmas gift that you ever received? I think everybody has one that they can remember throughout their life. In the movie A Christmas Story, it was a Red Ryder BB gun with a compass in the stock and this thing that tells time, as Ralphie described it. And if you look at Red Ryder BB guns, they have a sundial on the stock. I mean, he dreamed about how he would take that BB gun and use it to defend his, his family and, and protect them. And he spent all the days before Christmas just trying to figure out how he could get this most precious gift that he wanted. He dropped hints at home and in school. He, he, he asked the department store Santa Claus for this precious present. And in every case, he was always stymied by the, by the infamous answer, no, you'll shoot your eye out. How excited he was at the end of the movie when his dad gave him that BB gun as a surprise gift. And in spite of almost shooting his eye out, it became his most treasured Christmas present of all time. Now, maybe you can think back of a Christmas gift that you received and, and you still fondly remember it. Perhaps it was a bike, an easy bake oven, a cabbage patch doll. Maybe it was your first PlayStation or, or Nintendo gaming system. Perhaps it was a new car with one of those big red bows on the top of it, like I always see in so many commercials. Whatever the case, we long remember treasured gifts that we receive. And even today, they continue to put a smile on our face and they fill our hearts with, with joy and peace. I've often come to understand that that we experience even more joy, though, being the ones who can give such a gift to our family and our friends and our loved ones. I mean, we've all learned the, from experience that it's truly 
more blessed to give than it is to receive. And especially when it comes to the most necessary and joy-filled gift that these people will get. Well, we know that Christmas is the season of giving. We give our gifts to remind us of the greatest gift that we've ever received. It's not a pony, it's not earthly gifts, but it's a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Today, we're going to continue our, our Advent sermon series of encouragement where it tells us, let every heart prepare. As we're told to prepare to give. First of all, by focusing on how God has given us the most amazing gift of all. And then by discovering how we can give this priceless treasures to others this holiday season. I'd like to read our text once more that I started with because it talks about the most amazing treasure and gift of all. And Jesus said this in Matthew 13, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. You know, today Jesus tells us two parables about hidden treasure. One is a treasure that's hidden in a field, and the other is a pearl of great value. And he tells us right at the outset that these two treasures represent the kingdom of God. Now, even though these two stories are, are somewhat similar, they're a little bit different. This scenario would have been very familiar to the people in Jesus' day and age, but maybe not as much as us. He started out by saying the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. You see, in the first story, Jesus talks about a man who unexpectedly comes upon a hidden treasure. And maybe we might find that a little bit strange until we understand that in that time period, it was a common practice for a wealthy person to, to divide his wealth into thirds. One third he would keep in cash for carrying on business transactions Another third, he would invest in precious stones and jewels that he could easily take with him if he ever had to flee from an enemy. And the last third, he would bury in the ground somewhere, hoping maybe to dig it up and, and reclaim it when he was able to come back home. But there were times where this plan didn't work out. There were times where the person didn't come back home. And his buried treasure's location might not have been known to anyone else. We have kind of that scenario in this story that Jesus told. A man in the story happened to, to find such a treasure as he was strolling through the field one day. He very likely wasn't even looking for it. But when he came upon it, he recognized its value. And he was filled with joy and without hesitation... We're told he sold all his possessions so that he could buy the field and the treasure it contained. You see, they adhere to the same kind of binding laws that, that we do today. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. And then came the second story. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Now, in the second story, we have a dealer in costly pearls who made it his business to search far and wide for the best ones. And of course, in this story, he finds a more perfect pearl than in size and shape and color than, than any that he had seen before. So similarly, he just had to have this pearl. He sold all his possessions 
in order to have that perfect prized pearl. The point to both of these stories is that we find great treasure in the kingdom of heaven. You, you notice that these, these treasures were, were in places where anyone could find them. A treasure was hidden in a field, apparently by accident. And the other treasure, that pearl of great value, was found by a merchant searching long and hard, high and low. But in both cases, they realized the value of what they found, and they gave up everything to get it. The kingdom of heaven is really like both of these situations. You know, sometimes people are like the man in the first story. They're merely going on their way through life, not giving much thought to, to spiritual concerns. They're not worried about mortality issues or or eternity. Uh, they refuse to deal with that little voice inside them that keeps telling them, you know, there's really a God. But then at some point, they hear the good news of Jesus, a forgiveness of sins because of Jesus Christ. They weren't looking for that treasure, but they found it just the same. And then there's others that are like the pearl merchant. These are souls who have been searching. They can't escape the thoughts of their own death, their own sinfulness. I mean, they think about God, but they don't know him. And, and a lot of times, maybe they're scared of him. They have a, a very correct sense of the fact that they're going to have to meet their maker someday. I, I remember one Bible commentator once said, every man carries in his heart a mini judgment day. But these people search high and low for something that's going to give them comfort and joy. Maybe they travel to all the, the spiritual markets and bazaars in the world and, and they buy into this new philosophy or that new philosophy. Perhaps they dabble in just about every spiritual fad and trend. And then they hear the good news of forgiveness of sins. Peace with God. Through Jesus. And there's the pearl for which they searched. And you notice again what the finders immediately do. In both cases, they rush to sell all that they have so that they might become the owner of, of the treasure and the pearl. Now, let's not misunderstand. Jesus is not suggesting that the kingdom of heaven can be bought. No, this is a treasure that God gave. When human beings brought sin into God's perfect world, he was prepared to give. God so loved the world that he, he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. This son of God gave his best by giving himself to us, by humbling himself to be, to be born into our world at Christmas time in order to keep the law perfectly in our place. He gave his best by giving up his life and the cross as the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And he gives us full and free forgiveness and a home in heaven as a gift by grace through faith. For those people that were searching high and low for some kind of peace, they probably discovered, like the pearl merchant that, that every other religion keeps telling you that you have to do something, that you have to earn your way to heaven. But God's word is so very clear. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus paid the full price, that he did it all, that he shouted out from the cross, it's finished. I've kept the law perfectly. I've died for the sins of the world. The gospel constantly tells us that we're saved by grace through faith, not by our own doing, not by any installment payments that we make. It's a gift of God, not by works, so that no one could boast. In this parable, Jesus is revealing not only the great worth of this, 
But the exclusiveness of this treasure, you're only going to find it in him. And Jesus wants us to see that, that the present and eternal benefits of this are worth far more than anything that this world might have to offer. The point of the parable is that a person is willing to part with everything else to have the treasure and the pearl. Nothing else matters. Nothing else compares to be able to say, this is my treasure and this is my pearl. My dear friends, the good news is that you're able to say that by God's grace. You know, I don't know what your story is, and I don't know which story more resembles you. Perhaps you are like the first man that, that kind of found these treasures of Christ hidden in water in the word at baptism. Or when somebody invited you to Sunday school or to vacation Bible school. Or maybe you're like the second story where you're a person that spent a large part of your life dissatisfied with the pearls of lesser quality. And then you found the pearl of great, pri great price in Christ. Whatever your story here today, by the power of the Holy Spirit working through the word, you're able to say, Christ is my treasure and my pearl. Here today, you get, you get to live in peace and joy because you have the assurance that your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus' death and resurrection. You have treasure. And this is a treasure that the Bible tells us moth and rust cannot destroy and that no thief can take from you. My dear friends, we live in a culture that tries to find happiness in possessions and, and determines success in dollars. If anything, Jesus would say to you, don't fall for that because it's a lie. I mean, it's fine to work hard and, and to be compensated for your labors, but you know, our Savior would say, what does it profit you if you gain the whole world and you're rich in that way and you're not rich spiritually in your soul. You know, a person's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions, we're told. Always remember, you have it all when you can say, Christ is my treasure. Christ is my pearl. And I pray that Christ will always be your dearest treasure. But there's one more point I want to make today. There are people that perhaps you know who don't yet know Christ. The treasure is still hidden from them. The pearl is still undiscovered. And it really is for us who can say Christ is my treasure and Christ is my pearl to say to others, Christ is your treasure as well. And he's your pearl. Of all the treasures that we could give to people this holiday season, Perhaps the simple message that Jesus is the reason for the season is the most important Christmas present that we could give. Perhaps you can do it by simply handing them one of these free buttons that we give out in the front of our church that doesn't just plug our church, but, but provides people with the true and lasting comfort and joy as it says, Jesus, not only our living hope, but your living hope as well. In that way, they too can have the ultimate Christmas gift of a Savior that they can cherish for all eternity. And maybe it'll be the gift that they in turn give to others as well. My friends, times are, are different today, but the more things are different, the more they stay the same. I mean, in Jesus' day and age, they didn't have banks in which you could keep your money. They didn't have safety deposit boxes to, to store your valuables and your important documents. There were no safes. But in a lot of ways, those times are similar in that you still have to be careful what you store in your home, don't you? 
I mean, you never know who might break in and steal your stuff. So we always try to find places to stash our valuables. Kind of like the, the folks in Bible times. The trouble is if you hide it too well, you may forget where it is and it becomes lost and, and forgotten. My mom did that. She was very uh, famous for, for hi hiding things in, in places throughout the house, maybe some loose floorboards in the, in the closet. But then as she got older, she forgot where all of these treasures were hidden and we had to go through the entire house on this, this treasure hunt for her. My friends, don't put Jesus in a secret hiding place. You might forget where you left him. Wear your faith on the outside like your best clothes. Let others see him. Wear him like armor that gives you strength or, or like a quilt that, that warms you when the world is so cold. But share him with others. I mean, show that treasure to everyone because... They can't take it from you. You'll always have it for yourself. And the most beautiful thing is, this is a treasure that'll never run out. I mean, we forget about it sometimes, but God places plenty of reminders in our path to lead us back to our precious treasure. Everybody knows that on a treasure mark, X marks the spot. X is where you dig. X is where you find the treasure. On the treasure map of life, the treasure is not marked with an X, but with a cross. For it is at the cross that we really find our dearest treasure. It's at the cross that we say, Christ is my treasure and my pearl. Prepare to give that map to others this holiday season. Prepare to give them the manger where the Son of God was born for them and the cross where the, the sacrificing Savior died for them and the empty tomb where the risen Lord assures them of, of everlasting life in heaven. And then, my friends, prepare to rejoice as the Holy Spirit works saving faith and love in their hearts and moves them also to say, Christ is my treasure and my pearl. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Almighty and most gracious God, we are so richly blessed. You are a God who has not only cared for us and you provide and protect and preserve us, but you loved us so much to save us when we couldn't save ourselves. You sent your son, Jesus, to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. You sent him to not only die for us, but to rise again and assure us of everlasting life and a home in heaven. And that's what really gives us Christmas peace and Christmas joy and comfort every day of our lives. But there are so many people who have, have not found their treasure as yet. So we pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll work through the word, that you'll touch hearts and lives and we thank you for the privilege of using us to share that word. Help us to reflect the love of Jesus every day in every way so that everyone can have the most precious treasure of all, Jesus Christ. We ask this in his name, in whose name we now join to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Motivated by the Savior's life, death, and resurrection, the members of Bloomington Living Hope Lutheran Church give freely of their of their time and their talents and their treasures to advance the mission of our church to know Christ and to make him known. If you would like to support this ministry, you can do so online. Just go to our website, blh.org, and you go down to the donate section, click on that, 
and it'll guide you through. You'll also notice on our, our YouTube page that, that we'll have accompanying hymns and songs that will enhance your worship. And, and in connection with this message, you can certainly click on them as, as you uh, join together in singing your praises to God. But at this time, receive with believing hearts the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.